In this video, we'll write the electron configuration for Ag and Ag+. This is silver and the silver ion. So when we do this, silver is a bit of an exception, so we have to be careful. Let's take our time and get this right. So we have the periodic table here, and it's divided up into these orbital blocks. This will be real helpful for us. And we can see silver right here, that's 47. So silver on the periodic table, that has an atomic number of 47. All these elements are neutral. That means that the number of protons and electrons, they'll be the same. 47 is the atomic number. That's the number of protons. So we have 47 electrons for just silver, neutral atom, silver. So let's write the electron configuration for silver. So we'll start here, we have 1s1. So we have 1s1, 1s2, that's full. So we're just gonna write 1s2, and we have 2s1, 2s2, that's full. We go to 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. P holds up to 6, so we have 2p6. And let's stop for a second, because where should we end based on this table? If we follow over here, we have 4d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we should end in 4d9. So it's helpful to think about that, and this is why this is really a helpful table. Let's go on. We had 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then we go from the 4s to the 3d. D can hold up to 10, so we'll put 3d10. And remember, silver has atomic number 47, so 47 protons, 47 electrons. All these numbers are going to need to add up to 47. So I have 3d, then 4p6, 5s2, and then 4d9, which is where we wanted to end up. This is the electron configuration for Ag, just based on using this table. If you used one of these electron configuration charts, you'd get the same answer. So all these numbers add up to 47. Silver, though, is an exception, so we have to think about this a little bit more. This is not correct. This is not what we see in the lab or in our experiments. So let's write the correct electron configuration for silver, and then it'll be easy to do it for the silver ion. So the first thing we need to correct is with transition metals, those D block elements, the 3D is written before the 4S. So we'll replace that and then over here. So this is a little bit better, it's more accurate. So we have this now as our electron configuration, which still isn't correct. When we look at the diagram here, we have our 1s1, 1s2. They're in opposite directions, so this is full. We go to 2s2, and so on. If we go out here and look at the 4d and the 5s, we see this 4d. It's 4d9, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 electrons. It's not full. And what experiments have told us is that half-filled or completely filled d orbitals, they're more stable. So here, if we had one more electron here, this would be much more stable. So we could take this electron here and move it over from the 5s2 to that 4d, and we could fill this out. Now this is a full d orbital. This is full, and now we have one here, so we should update these numbers here. Now we have that 3d10, and we have the 5s1. And this is the correct electron configuration for Ag, for silver. So we needed to understand that this 4d, if we had this full, or just one in each one of these little suborbitals here, that would be much more stable. Using that information, let's do the electron configuration for just Ag+. So here's silver again. And to become positive, we need to lose an electron. We need to lose a negative charge. So this goes away here. This becomes positive, and this is the electron configuration for Ag+. We just lost this one 5s1 electron, so that's it. So these are the electron configurations for Ag here, and then Ag+. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.